Hi, my name is Brian and in this video I'm going to show you how to put a new gear set in your servo and save you money from having to buy a whole new servo. We'll start this off with kind of a fun quote. Um, we all make mistakes, we all crash, we all have issues. They say that there's uh, two kinds of model airplanes. Uh, ones that have been uh, flown and crashed and ones that have not been flown. <laughs> so eventually it happens. Here's a good quote on that. This is by Tom Krause, spelled K-R-A-U-S-E and he says there are no failures just experiences and your reactions to them so you can be upset about your crash sometimes they're heartbreaking especially if you put a lot of errors into a scale model or something uh, but they can all be rebuilt and it's part of the hobby it's part of the fun so enjoy the video here we go well, this is a Trex 500 ESP they normally have a yellow canopy I went for the red one put some bullet bike stickers on it I had sitting around um, I had an unfortunate incident happen where I had it drop. I had just got some new batteries. I just got them all soldered up, the connections and everything. I was running it, and I'm running the Dean's connectors like this one here. And apparently I didn't do a good job, or there was a problem with the speed control or something because it dropped from 20 feet. Uh, the other unfortunate thing is instead of using the Align skids that you see that it's rebuilt with now, I was using some Taro skids, T A R. OT or something. It's like Tarot. At any rate, they broke off and ultimately as uh, I spooled down the blades struck the ground. Had a whole bunch of damage, but one of the things that was damaged was the servo, my little DS520, which is a digital servo for the tail. Um, as you can see, I've got this one opened up. I have the four screws removed from the back. And I'm going to show you one other thing. Um, as you look at the uh, uh, tail boom here, you can see that there's limits to this. Uh, specifically the limits are right here and right here. So that's as far as it can go. It can go all the way around from here and then all the way back around to here. So we need to notice that because when we look at the servo itself and the gear on it, there's a stop on it. You can see that it's pointing to the end. So it goes all the way to one way and stops, all the way to the other way and stops. So when you put this in, you want to energize it, have it be uh, powered on, and then you want the gear to be right there. So this one's already been done, uh, but we're going to stack these gears because what can happen uh, after a crash is you can have some servo damage, you can have some of the gears be damaged. As we look at this one, um, you can see that the teeth are chewed up right here along this uh, area. So as I turn this, and you can feel when you get to that point, um, you can feel it kind of click and you hear that off camera and you can see it just kind of skips. So where those gears got stripped, we're going to need to replace that. And rather than spending $30 to $50 on a new servo, um, it's a better option to spend about $7 on a kit to repair it. A line has a little uh, setup to where, in fact, here's the part number for this one. Um, you can just get a new little baggie full of gears, servo gear set, as it says. So that's what we're doing. So the first thing I like to do is I like to take a picture of how the old one was. What order was this in? Um, as I pull these off, what order do they come off in and what order do they go back in? Let's see if we can get that to focus. Um, so the first one that comes off is this one here and so I just kind of set them in order uh, how they came off I'll just set them off to the side on a white piece of paper just because it's easy to have them not get lost so they're yellow enough that they show up so the next one that comes off uh, would be either the bearing or that gear it looks like these two kind of go together so or this one actually So I'll pair them up and then do them in reverse order. So I line that up. Set this aside. And I've got this one. And you can set them uh, top or bottom, however you want. And then this is the first one you want to put on along with this one. This one's fine. You could even just leave it on there. That might be a really good idea for you to do that. Um, the other thing that you can kind of notice is that this one's keyed. 
you can see that uh, there's a little thing that goes one direction. You see it easier on the white end. So, anyway, um, it also comes with the little posts. So you can pull the posts and redo those. If you think they might be bent, mine are fine. So I'm not going to mess with that. So, in the reverse order, I'm going to stack these real quick. This saves so much confusion and doubt and trial and error to just have everything laid out. If you want to see what I'm doing there, I just have them all laid out uh, in that fashion. And I have them stacked the way that they go on. So it just really, you don't have to think a lot about what you're doing. You can just go through the process, which is nice sometimes. Okay, so the first one that's going to go on is this one. And you can see that there's already a bearing in there, and there's a bearing on the new one. So I want to extract that. Need the help of a tool for this one. It's really stuck. Most servos are a lot easier, but this being a high quality digital servo, it's a little bit fussy. I'm saying that that bearing's good. It didn't get hit that hard. It wasn't exposed to water or anything, so I'm actually just going to pull the bearing out of this one. That might be easier. There we go. Set that one aside. Take a look and make sure that we've got a good match, and we do. Looks like there's a little color difference of that plastic piece in the middle. But uh, anyway, so I'll take ah take that bearing off too. So we'll want to stack that. I should have put that in the order that it came off. That would have been a good idea. So we'll point that the same direction it was before, and then just start moving on down the lineup. All right. So this little guy goes in there first. And it was in this position, and then the next one went on like that. And then you can put the bearing back on. You can do this from memory, or you can take a picture with your smartphone and let it remember for you. I'm going to tell you right now, your smartphone's going to remember better than you can. Alright, so that is the affected gear that was stripped right there. Go to get the last one. Just like that. Now when we turn it, everything turns smoothly. No hiccups, hang-ups, or problems. You look on the old gears, and I see a little bit of lubrication on them. So we're going to put just a little bit on these. You want a really lightweight oil on these. You don't want anything too heavy or it can cause a drag. Those servos are very fast. The digital ones are. So you want to bear that in mind. A very light sewing machine oil or household oil would work well. Um, I'm going to use... Uh, this is actually for bike chains. Uh, it's just Dumont Tech Light. It's just a lightweight oil that just really sticks on there good. And less is more when it comes to doing this. So I'll put just a little bit on a screwdriver. And just drag it across where the gears are. And they'll get each other. It's like kids when they're muddy. Take one muddy kid. Turn it, let me get this out of there, sorry. Get one muddy kid to play with a bunch of other kids and they will all be muddy. Get one gear lubed up, it'll lube the rest of them. At least you have to have it in the right plane. Obviously there's several planes involved here. Sounds like a aircraft accident, doesn't it? Speaking of crashing a helicopter. Turn that and get that oil to 
affect the other ones. Oh, we skipped. I'll hold it down. I like the way those fine gears are getting the lube, but not getting much on the others, on the big ones. I'm just going to go for it direct. There we go. I don't really want to get the oil in the electronic part of it. Wouldn't really kill it if he did, but anyway, I really like what's happening there. Get a little oil on that bearing, and we're done. So the way this goes in, you just line that up um, to center so that it's pointing at the top because we looked at our range of motion at the beginning. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to tip the helicopter just a little bit and I'm going to get the four screws uh, that go in through the back. I'm just going to start with two and put them in. Let's grab it by the main rotor there. Just kind of wiggle it and set that into place. And then once you've got it to where they're seating and you're not going to drop one, just like have it fall off the rod, for example, uh, then you just kind of squeeze it from both sides and then you can put your screws in. I'll show you. Okay. These screws are like needles, they're like uh, sewing pins or something. It's so small. It's teeny tiny Phillips. That's the whole idea about a micro server, micro helicopter, is you want something small. It's funny as you get a complete gear set, and that's nice, because that way if there's any wear that you didn't see, because it's so small, get everything taken care of but typically you'll find that you'll have one gear that strips in particular. My first uh, electric helicopter was a Blade 400 and those servos were a little 9 gram servo they were absolutely terrible. They were awful. They were always glitching and making me crash. I mean, here's my first one. I was a little bit of a rookie but I spent a lot of time on the simulator in the stark contrast to going to the Align helicopters, it was just so, so, so much better. I wound up spending so much time flying instead of just doing repairs all the time. Alright, so we're going to zoom back out. Wrong way, hello. And we're going to go to the front side. The front side just has this little screw here uh, to hold the uh, servo arm on. And you may have to take that on and off a couple times and reposition it as needed. That'll give you an idea of what we're doing here. Okay, zoom back in. So there's the new gear on our DS520 inverted. It knows it's a 3D helicopter, doesn't it? It's already doing the inversion itself. We've already put it in position. Now I may have to pull this right back off and do it again. I have a bigger screwdriver than the last one that I had. And uh, we just take that screw. You can put a little bit of, once you know that you have it right, you can take it and put a little bit of thread locker on it if you wish. As you wish. In fact, I just watched that show today. Love that. Princess Bride. If you haven't seen that movie, Princess Bride is a great movie. Alright, so we've got that snugged down. We move our little arm back and forth, and that is just silky smooth. Better than new. Move it all the way one way till the stop. All the way the other way till the stop. And we are looking good. I might have it a little bit too much counterclockwise. See how that goes all the way to the end? And then this one doesn't. So between here and here, well, it's awfully close though. 
So if I go a little bit the other direction, we'll be good. That gives you an idea of how to get started in rebuilding a servo. Hope this video was entertaining and fun to watch. And most of all, I hope it was helpful. Be sure to click like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching.